first approaching a class. It's 8.30 in the morning, I'm walking off the class, I'm about ready to teach. The first thing I'm thinking about is, where are they? What's gonna be on the student's mind? The morning for teaching is an important period for me. I have to go through my whole pre-teaching ritual. I have my pre-teaching trance. If you watch professional baseball players, most really good baseball players, when they come to bat, they do the exact same movements as they prepare for the ball. I've taught here for 22 years, and I'm still nervous every day I walk into the classroom. I still don't know exactly how the discussion will play out. The 10 minutes before class are a really fascinating time because you've got about 15 things you want to get done in those 10 minutes. Just before class, I'm usually brushing up on case facts. You know, I just need to be firm in my particular opinion because you know there are 89 other opinions that are going to come out during the classroom that I need to either agree with or disagree with. I might kind of skim through some of my notes or, or kind of think about um, you know whether in my learning team somebody brought up an issue that I hadn't thought about before. The second thing I'm thinking about is how am I going to get started? What's the opening question? But equally important, who's the opening student? Who's going to be the first person who I ask to lay out the issues. And as the second hand passes the 12 on the clock, we get going. All right, good morning. Our first real taste of competitive dynamics is the case on Holland Sweetener Company in the aspartame business. Your role is that of Winfred Vermees. You're the CEO of Holland Sweetener Company. You're entering the market for aspartame. For the first time, you're facing NutraSweet with competition. And you've got to ask yourself, how do I think NutraSuite is going to respond? With a price war or with normal competition? What do you say? To me, the reason that this method is so effective is that it really mirrors what managers do in real life. We put the student in the seat of that uh, manager or that employee confronting a problem. It's fun, right? I mean, there's a lot of active engagement. It's hard in a lot of ways as well, though. Um, nothing is spoon-fed to you. You've got to be prepared, and you've got to come ready to play every day. The most fulfilling classroom experiences at HBS, you can tell, come with intense preparation from all sides. It's crucial. If you aren't prepared for the class, you can't engage as much. You can't have a kind of friendly, dynamic discussion with all your classmates. Individual preparation is a solo affair. You go through the case, try to master the details, develop the supporting analysis, come up with recommendations. I'm trying to develop a ritual. I think um, getting a, a bit of an overview at first and then trying to fill in the details is definitely a better way than just starting at the beginning and trying to read all the way through to the end. Sometimes just working back of envelope numbers, sometimes getting into in-depth detail, uh, creating full write-ups that then I bring to my learning team in the morning. I really try to really imagine myself as the protagonist and it really does require um, a concerted effort to do that. The day before a case, you'll find people in Spangler or in Baker or in kind of the dorm lounges saying, oh, what was your opinion about that? Or what did you think about this? Um, so it's really kind of an open dialogue. We have uh, a folder for, for each of you. The overview, one page summary, a board plan, and then at least my shot at the Faculty prepare version. far more for a case discussion than any individual student. I find it takes me five, ten times as much time as it typically takes a student. There are cases that I've taught numerous times and I get as excited about it the tenth time I teach it as, as I do the first time, maybe more so, because I know what the possibilities are and I know, I know what the richness is. Here we'll be getting the students particularly to be better at analyzing individual competitors, understanding the generic threats that accompany success, uh, and uh, we'll be introducing them to tools, particularly the, the tool of game theory. I usually put them in the position of uh, Wilford Vermees and try to get you to think about, will it be a price war? And the thing that's always impressed me is the extent to which there are actually debates in teaching groups. That here, a set of people trained in the same disciplines around the same materials can have very different views about the best way to uh, orchestrate a case or even different answers to the question, you know, what's this case really about? 
I expect students to give their heart and soul to the case. Most importantly, I expect the students to put themselves in the shoes of the protagonist of the case and ask themselves seriously, what would I do? And I want them to think very seriously, what would they do if they really had that situation in their lives? These are questions where there are different perspectives. You can marshal the facts in the case and reach very different conclusions. So part of what students do is they decide day in and day out, and they get in the habit of making decisions. NutraSweet patented the, the use and blend of this sugar replacement called the learning team experience has been absolutely invaluable to the case method. I'm not sure I could have made it through first semester without it. Because I assume that there would be 5% reduction in the U.S. price, then uh, HSC will always want to enter. And We hold ourselves to pretty high standards as far as being able to come up with our rationale for why we would do what we are going to do. I'm still not buying. I just don't get the fact that if for Coke and Pepsi, a competitive advantage and the stuff that everybody's buying now is with a Nutrisweet label on their can. They have no other option to go to anything else unless they completely change off of our product and can't. What the we then try and bring to it again uh, is a different perspective, a different viewpoint, hopefully a different approach to looking at the same information. The fact that they were neck and neck in the diet industry and use that to really fuel a rivalry that used Nutrisweet. We have someone in our learning team who's from Argentina and who works in a sugar factory in Argentina. Just like every case, it turns out there's someone that has some direct personal experience. We have people from different backgrounds, so there are a couple finance guys, I'm a marketing person, there's somebody from a tech background. So it's very helpful to kind of bounce ideas off of each other in the mornings when we're really prepared to have a debate and have a discussion in class. You could also think about a sign signaling effect. If you don't send a right signal to the market, to this new entrant, then you'll probably have many new small entrants in the future. So It's not uncommon that someone will say in class, uh, when I first read the case, I thought X. But after talking to people, some people in my learning team, I've actually evolved my thinking uh, to the following. So I think in the learning teams, we want students to engage some of the same muscles that they will in the classroom to say, um, Here's an opportunity for me to, to go out on a limb, all right? I, I have this idea and uh, I, I'd like your feedback. As one for Vermees, looking at your competitor, looking at NutraSuite, how do you expect they will respond? With a price war or with normal competition? What do you say? Julissa. I actually think that they will respond to the price war. Okay. Why? Um, particularly, well, if you look at Europe and Canada kind of in a vacuum, you would think that they're going to lose money in the short term. I have the case in front of me. I have the write-up in front of me. Yeah. And I'm really looking at what are the key points. I mean, in my head, I'm, I'm already thinking, like, all right, top three things that I want to get across in my 30-second um, And exactly how is the price war going to accomplish that end? The knowledge that you might be called upon to make an intelligent, cogent argument in front of people whose opinion you care about does motivate you in those off hours. Who sees it very differently? Ms. Mark, what's going on? I, I think they're very confident in their, um, their brand and strategy for, they, they don't want to turn this into a commodity product. We accept everyone's backgrounds and everyone's perspectives to the point where we can actually hear them out. And I feel like everyone does a really good job of listening to the point where they can think about it and say whether they agree or disagree, and then coming up with a compelling reason as to why they agree or disagree. Kara, in or out? And this is where I think the behavioral issues are overwhelming. They're gonna continue to fight because they've already invested in this, um, so I think they're gonna just kind of keep throwing good money after bad. I know I cannot compete with NutraSuite on price, but I, I might be able to compete with them on brand. So what I would try to do is try to do some like customer research and try to really get the HSC product out there and really get it to the point where there's some critical mass as far as brand recognition and then approach Pepsi and say, hey Pepsi, here's an additional level of um, aspartame that you can have to compete with Coke who's using the NutraSweet. Kara, why don't you role play Pepsi? What do you, how do you respond to Phil? I have a couple of problems. I mean, one, your product isn't branded yet and it takes Oops. quite a bit of... <laughs> I see that you're trying to give me a point of differentiation to go after my competitor, 
But to be honest, I just don't have the faith in you yet <laughs> to be willing to take that gamble. <laughs> <laughs> I think fun is one of the most underrated aspects of the case method. Um, learning shouldn't always be difficult. Learning shouldn't be painful. There's a certain element of joy that comes with learning. Jen, you had another proposal. Yeah, so I'm going to go to Pepsi and I'm going to say, I'm only going to work with you. If you just work with me, then I'll lower your price and you're going to get the competitive advantage from working with me, whereas NutraSweet's not going to have to match that because they're just working with code. That sounds a little bit better. <laughs> I found that I learned a ton from my professors, but I really learned the most from my fellow section mates. You never, ever, ever, ever enter a price war if you don't have credible low-cost position. If you ever do that and I learn about it, I will deny that I ever knew you at Harvard Business School. Okay? Ever, ever. And very important what Smear is saying, they entered without any advantage. There was not a superior gap between cost and most to pay. That uh, was a major lesson of the case. And in addition, it drew on concepts we had built up over the previous half dozen cases. So it showed that things had kind of come together for a set of people. We'll continue to look at competitive dynamics on Thursday when we look at the fascinating battle between British satellite broadcasting and Sky Television. Thanks. My favorite classes are those where the debate is still raging 20 minutes after class, and we can't stop it. Yeah, you really give a lot in those 80 minutes as far as listening and vocalizing your perspective. You know, you really start to see why the case method works so well because you're surprised with how much you remember from the case, but also from what people's responses were to the case. I mean, there are very specific situations that any manager is going to experience um, at some point in their career. We teach people in many ways the courage to act under uncertainty. The facts in a case are always limited. The amount of information you have at hand is by design quite compressed. You're working under great time pressure. We're asking people to learn how to take a stand. It's not a passive process, and frankly, management's not a passive process. They get to try out many of the component processes of management in the classroom, and they get to build muscles around things like judgment. The answer to most questions is, it depends. If one can leave here understanding under what circumstances you would go left and under what circumstances you would go right, then you've got a depth of knowledge and you've got it kind of in your gut as well as in your, your head. I think Harvard Business School is the finest teaching institution in the world. And I don't just mean among business schools. Teaching is in the fabric of the culture. We go back in a long tradition, started probably even before Socrates, but we can certainly go back to there. We want to continue in that tradition. Some things never get old.